<laughs> hey friends, Duncan here, Snowboard Trainers. Today here, we're here with Kyle for another episode of One Lap. Kyle, how's your day going? It's really awesome. Can't beat this weather. Yeah. Uh, Kyle just got back from uh, Japan. How was your trip uh, in Japan? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, I wish I was there right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what was the one resort that you wouldn't recommend people go to? I'm not going to say it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a really popular resort. It's really resort. good, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so just trust me on that one. Yeah. Okay. So if you know a really big, uh, popular uh, resort that starts with an N that's in Japan, maybe stay away from it. It's a little bit more Americanized than some of the other resorts that could be a little bit more fun. Wouldn't recommend it. But if you're looking for that American experience when you're out of the country, then it'd be a good resort to go to. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I think Kyle has a really interesting story in the sense that He's taken no formal lesson. He's just watched like YouTube videos primarily, right? Mm -hmm. And then he puts in a hundred plus days a season for the last how many seasons? Uh, about five. Okay, so he's in the last five years, he's ridden over 500 days just to put things into perspective. So he's out here practicing. He's not just watching YouTube videos and then like, why am I not getting better? He's like watching the video. Are you taking video of yourself? Uh, no. No, but Never. you're just going out and just checking your He's really big into carping, but so you'll go in and just check your lines from the lift yep. to make sure you're making the right turn shape and size. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that has helped you progress? Uh, it's all just been feel. Um, sometimes when you know you're getting the carb right, it's just perfect. And then just going faster and faster and trying to get that same feeling. And then uh, it just builds off of that, I guess. Yeah. So again, you don't need lessons, but if you're not taking lessons or working with a coach, you want to be like Kyle and you want to snowboard 100 plus days a year. You also want to be like doing other things when you're on the lift line, if you're specifically carving or on the lift, um, the chair lift, checking out your line to make sure you're making the right turns that you're trying to do. And then Kyle's probably more of a filler because he's checking in with his kinesthetic, like feeling, does it feel right? Yeah. Any other tips for people that you'd recommend who are trying to get into carving and want to lay down carves? whether it's on their hill edge or toe edge and just progress? Uh, a lot of what I've learned, at least from YouTube, is not to bend over at the waist, right? It's okay. more of an extension when you get in that turn. Uh, so just like knees crouched over and then just extending from there. So what you mean is like, you don't want your shoulders to be falling over your toes. Exactly. You want to keep your, your head and your shoulders over your hips. Then it doesn't feel right. Then After, it doesn't yeah. feel when you yeah. fall over. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you skid a lot. Cool, anything else? Uh, not really, just have fun, you know, and don't be afraid of falling. Yeah. <laughs> Getting hurt, yeah. happens. It happens, it's part, of, uh, it's part of the game we play. Um, what's one of your favorite things about snowboarding? What keeps you coming back? Uh, just the feeling of uh, carving, you know, it's just, it's almost like a roller coaster, except you're controlling it. So uh, the speed and the forces and stuff when you're feeling it, and you just start linking those turns and uh, there's nothing else like it, at least that I've found. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any memorable days? Any days that you're just like, holy smokes, that was maybe one of the best days of my life? Uh, so I guess the way I've observed Mammoth is two days after a storm is going to be the best days in terms of like firmness and uh, just like how well your edge holds in the snow. So like after two grooms, it's just absolutely perfect. The first day is way too like soft still, you sink in too much. But that second day is when you can really lay in the, the edges and just go crazy. So this will be a perfect day almost. Yeah. Yeah. So for specifically for carving two days after it snows, one day for the first groom because it's too soft, they're packing and pressing all that snow on the groomers. And then the second day it has that really nice consistency. In Mammoth. Yeah. In, in Mammoth at least. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, you don't have to answer this, but how do you, what's your experience been like working at Mammoth? Uh, I like it a lot. So I started in just like a retail position where I worked in the afternoon. Uh -huh. uh, so I would get every morning to ride. And then now in my current position, I get lunches almost every day and I'm out on the hill most of the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so That's cool. Yeah, so if you're looking for a job and you want to snowboard a bunch, Mammoth could be a good, op good opportunity for you. Work nights. Work nights. Yeah. <laughs> Or try to be in a position where you could snowboard, like you're snowboarding like a coach or an instructor on the mountain. Yep. And then, yeah, Kyle does pretty well up on the mountain. He works in IT, so if you, if you like IT. Yeah. 
It's a good, it's a good it's opportunity. <laughs> um, anything else you want to wrap with before we get off the chairlift? Uh, Any words of encouragement? Any thoughts? I don't know. Just uh, watch some guys out there. You know, Ryan Napton, Tyler Shorlton. Those are kind of my inspirations. And Casper Carver. That's the guy who got me into it. <laughs> awesome, friends. Stay tuned for the for the one lap coming up right now. We going? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Scott. 